Peace my fellow human beings and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my journey as a dancer. Any of you know uh, that I'm a dancer, obviously either from the content that I make on my videos or if you follow me on Instagram. So I know mostly everybody I know knows that I'm a dancer, but I don't think many people know how I became a dancer or why I started dancing. I also just wanted to start out by saying that I did not really come from a family full of dancers. My older sister danced, but, and I'll get into that in a second, but other than that, I did not, I don't come from a family of people who, you know, are dancers. So I just wanted to put that out there. This is something that totally just came to me. It's just, it, I didn't really have a choice in it. It's just who I am. I'm just gonna tell you now. There are people outside of my window blowing leaves, so, just excuse that, please, but I have to finish this video now. I started dancing when I was two years old. That was the time stamp. How I started was my sister, my older sister, used to be a Pacers cheerleader for the NBA. This is, was all told to me by my parents. I would be going to her practices and dancing along and learning all of the dances, um, practice after practice after practice, and I would keep going and I would be dancing and learning all of it at two years old. Not perfectly, of course, but trying my hardest. So after a while, the coach caught on and basically the coach uh, approached my parents and asked if they would allow me to dance at the NBA playoff game. Of course my parents said yes and so that's really how I got started my first ever performance was in front of 33,000 people so I think that's probably why I have no fear of audiences or crowds or dancing in front of people at all because at two years old my unbeknownst to me this I all had to be told to me but my first performance was dancing in front of 33,000 people at the NBA playoffs Pacers uh, versus the uh, 76ers, but that was my first experience with dancing and being in front of a crowd. I don't remember at all, but everybody had to tell me that I did that, but that's when I started dancing and that was two years old. This is when I made the decision. I didn't know it was a decision then, but now I know, but the decision to say, oh, I want to be a dancer, I want to perform the Wiz. Y'all, when I say, I used to have The Wiz on a VHS tape, and I would watch it over and over and over and over again, from front to back. I think it was because I was watching people who look like me dance and look great on screen. Like, I didn't really know how, I didn't know what I was looking at, but all I know was I was enthralled by Diana Ross and Michael Jackson and Lena Horne. I think unknowingly I made the decision like, oh, I wanna do that. And so I would get on in front of the uh, TV and just dance and, and dance along to all these great um, pieces and numbers. And, and even to this day, when I watch The Wiz, I'm still just 100% just like, amazed by what they did and you know what I don't I actually think the Wiz when it first came out it was not received well at all and uh, it was kind of shunned by a lot of uh, the public and everything like that for I guess I don't know being weird or not good but I definitely didn't feel like that 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 movie had a big um, part in why I'm dancing today So now I'm going to skip to when I was around 8 years old, from age 8 to 16. Age 8, I started dancing at church for a dance group that my church had, Images of the Light. What dancing at church taught me was my form of expression, passion for dance. That's where that was all cultivated, and the emotion that I put into my dancing, I learned uh, dancing at church. It's where I learned to really connect with the people who are watching me and bringing them exactly where I am, taking them from wherever they are and putting them exactly where I am through the way that I move. Really what I learned there at church was 
to dance with my face. And my mom also had a big part to do with that as well. She would always tell me, use your face, put some stank on it or whatever. But using my face and using my emotion. Big point is that we used to dance with face paint on. We would paint our face, white face paint, to look like mimes. It was like a mime hip hop group. A lot of people don't know, I started with hip hop. That's that's how I really started. It out in hip hop and liturgical and mime hip and miming and hip hop. So that's where I learned how to use all of my emotions. I know it's weird, but it makes a big difference in your dancing and it's something that not a lot of people uh, can do or feel comfortable doing, but it's something that I do. <laughs> it's something that I do and I can't help it. That's just how I dance. I use my face. Uh, as some people, I'll maybe insert some photos that I can put in, but uh, I was learned, I, I was taught to use my face because that's a big part of it. My individuality as a dancer and my uniqueness as a dancer. Because my dance mentor, Doren Smith and uh, Keith Prezi, they had a big part um, of just how I think about myself as a dancer and the confidence that it takes to be able to step out and be yourself and express yourself they really really nurtured that and and cultivated my uniqueness and my individuality and being able to, if somebody turns the music on and say hey dance you're on I can I know what to do I can dance I'm comfortable in what I do learned that all at, when I was uh, dancing at church so that was age 8 to 16. Moving on into a more recent time, this is just right before my presence. So this is when I was um, 18. I was 18 and I also went into this briefly in my uh, ranking my favorite performance videos. But this is right before I graduated high school. I began dancing for Kenyette Dance Company. This is when I totally changed as a dancer. Everything about my dancing was just totally just reformed and I just became a totally different dancer thanks to Kenyette Dance Company. When I got there, I was pure, um, how do I say it? Uh, emotion. I was pure emotion, I'll say that, because like I said, when I was dancing at church, there really was no technical basis. It was how much emotion can you put forward and how much can you let go. When I got to Kenyette, I was more, I was more like emotional. <laughs> and uh, what I learned there, uh, first of all, that's when I started being trained technically and classically. So that's why I tell people it is never too late to start training classically. It's never too late to start classically training. I didn't start until I was 18 and I wouldn't and I'm not a I'm not a bad dancer okay don't take your age and say oh you know it, I, it's never too late if you have the drive if you have the passion if you have you know the will to do it you can be whatever you want <laughs> okay they had um, a big task to harness my emotion and my passion and everything like that. Be more controlled and to dance smarter and not harder. That's what I learned with Kenyatta Dance Company, to, to dance smarter and not harder. To train in my technique and then to use my technique and then find the freedom in that, which was very valuable and it, and it totally changed me as a dancer, has made me more refined, not muted, but refined yeah i learned just a lot about my technique which i'm still always working on you're never you know you're as a dancer you're never gonna reach perfection you you always striving for, for perfection which is why i love to dance so moving on to the present where am i now what am i doing now how am i dancing now well if you could guess, uh, due to the pandemic, uh, I'm not doing as much dancing as I used to be. I've probably done the least amount of performances that I've done in uh, years. I mean, because I've been performing and I've been dancing, like I said, since I was two. And I never stopped 
dancing in front of people until this year, really. The last performance I did was February. I did two performances in February of this year, and then after that, done. I uh, hope to come back to my, I call it my family, my home, Kenyatta Dance Company. But right now, I'm waiting. I'm waiting until we reach some closure with this pandemic and wait till it really slows down. But I'm also teaching right now, and I'm a choreographer, as I don't know if many people know that but I'm a I'm a dance teacher and I'm a choreographer but I'm still dancing and I'm still trying my best to be as disciplined as I possibly can and not just totally let myself <laughs> slip away I yeah so that's where I am I'm, I'm still I'm taking classes at home I'm stretching at home when I can when I can I'm still a dancer and I'm still a performer when I am in the studio I'm by myself and teaching my virtual classes which is a real luxury really to be able to have a space to dance and you can be on your own and feel safe and everything like that so and I want to uh, get back in into being in front of audiences and being with my dance family and everything like that um, but <clears throat> right now I'm trying my best to keep safe and continue dancing and keep being disciplined all right everybody we made it to the end of the video if you made it this far thank you for watching the entire time <laughs> this was a very minuscule scope this was very broad this is not in depth at all but if you're looking for something more in depth please make sure to comment down below and then also comment down below what you want me to do because there's ideas that I have here and there but I really want to do what y'all want to see please if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I always say peace my fellow human beings and I'll see you in the next video bye